Another podcast, week 21. I've been dealing with two weeks of sickness. We've both had um, terrible illnesses. Yep. On Tuesday, I felt like death. Yeah? I was like, death, please come. <laughs> <laughs> That's He's how like, bad it was. Uh, hey, death. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> Everyone wants to die this week. <laughs> but can you just squeeze me in? <laughs> can you come just over here and just knock me off real just quick? Me. I don't even care how. <laughs> just, just squeeze me in real fast. Man, I could do like a hit by a truck on out of the front yard. <laughs> All right, I'll be outside. <laughs> 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 the truck's supposed to be where's here. This, where's this freaking <laughs> truck? <laughs> and then you see, like, two houses down, some guy's, like, watering his yard, and he gets hit by the truck. <laughs> that, was that, was my truck. Yeah, that was my truck. <laughs> and Death is like, wait, what was the address? <laughs> what was the address? Oh, we got oh. the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy didn't win. That's though. the wrong guy. <laughs> Got him. Ugh. Man, free death. And he gets he gets, he's mad because he's not getting paid. You know. <clears throat> it's like I gotta get to the next appointment. Oh man. But yeah. Feels slightly better today though. But I was telling Donnie earlier. I think you were telling be, me earlier? <laughs> yeah, I was telling you. I was telling them that I was telling you. Hey guys. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> I think it's your fault. You're blaming me? I'm blaming you. I think you should blame God. For, blame God? Why? Why would a loving God even make sickness a thing? I, I think it's Adam and Eve's fault. Are you going to blame it on Adam? But he yeah. made Adam. Huh? He made Adam. Yeah. He gave him the, uh, Keep backing he it gave up. Him the Keep power backing to it up. choose. How do you get past that, that problem? The How idea that the, the why would a loving God choose? make suffering in the world? He, he, didn't, he gave us the power to choose suffering. That is, that's, that's the classical answer. And, yeah. And, and that free if will we, is a, yeah, it'd be like, we didn't have free will. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I do actually think that I, I've came to the conclusion in my life that free will is the solve for, uh, if we have a loving God, why do we suffer? Right. And I, uh, I do, I think it's because of free will. Yeah. Like free will allots for so much of the calamities that we yeah. Into. I still. Still a lot of questions. Don't though. don't yeah don't like mosquitoes, like flies. You know, just like kids born with deficiencies and that sort yeah, of thing. That's, like, weird. that's not fair. Doesn't Another, seem very fair. But I saw this video the other day of this kid that was born with two heads. So which one? So like which he one had, was like it the was boss? A head here and then a head here. Oh, he's and in a Coyote both, Mundu they situation. Both were functioning. Yeah. Had their own brains, and they were both alive. Were they talking to each other? I don't. I mean, the the, the kid didn't live that long. Maybe like a year or two, but still, that's. Also, like, we didn't get a chance to figure out whether or not he was like, "Hey, yeah, like like, hey, can you check if my butt's clean?" And the other <laughs> yeah, one's like, "No, no." And that was like in the nineteen sixties or something. But still, that's <clears throat> pretty weird stuff. Like, how's that? Yeah, it's pretty it's heavy. A lot of a lot of questions. But talking about clean butts. What about clean butts? I was watching this AI generated thing on uh <laughs> It just made me laugh super hard. Look, this is not gonna be that funny, but I'm gonna tell you. Okay. <laughs> the thing that made me laugh the hardest this week was an AI Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, yeah. You did I me, tell you this? You, yeah, you did. <laughs> a little bit about this. This is the funniest thing. <laughs> AI Sonic was like, hey kids! And he's doing Sonic stuff. <laughs> The best way to clean your butt is to do a handstand in the shower. <laughs> That's probably my favorite thing. <laughs> AI. So AI, a robot made that? Yeah. <laughs> what will humans laugh at? Sonic, shower, clean butts. <laughs> well, it brings me to, to uh, a recent accomplishment that I made in my life is I installed a bidet. Oh, and you did? Yeah. And how how's your experience so far? Well, I'll tell you, the worst part about it <laughs> was getting the temperature set. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, because you have like this. Like at first I get it on, you know, and then you have to. There's only one way to test a bidet. You got to use it. Yeah. If okay. you, you well, I tried not having my pants down and then just getting right in there and like 
trying to grab it, but it's just, it's supposed <laughs> to clean your butt hole. So yeah. I turned it on and <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, yeah. So you're like fighting the bidet, you're putting your hand down on it, and you're like, I wonder if this is... The, really, the only best way to do it is to just uh, go ahead and pretend you're taking a deucer. <laughs> yeah, and then you just... <laughs> Bro, that thing, but if it's on too much, it's like, no, am I saying. gay? Am I gay now? Did that make me gay? Does that count as a gay thing? <laughs> no, yeah, the first time my brother, he has... Not there's anything wrong with that, but no, bidets wrong with it. If on too hard might make you gay. The first time I used bidets at my brother's house, and that was yeah. a problem I ran into. I was like, oh, bidet, cool, this would be a fun experience. And I turned it on, and yeah. it was so finicky, like, yeah. like it gets real strong real fast. I was like, oh, Ooh. God. <laughs> I'm the cleanest I've ever been right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think it cleaned the insides. <laughs> and so, yeah, like I wanted to try to perfect the pressure, but I was scared to at that point. It's like, I barely touched this thing. It's like, <laughs> you know? It's like, cough. Cough for me, please. Yeah, that's, uh, anyways, so, but, but I know for sure that my butt's cleaner than yours. I'm sure. Right now, you Americans <laughs> watching this right now, my butt is definitely cleaner than your butt. <laughs> and I know because you are just taking the toilet paper and you're just smearing it. <laughs> you're just smearing it around. You're just swishing it all over the place. And you, you know, just keep going at it, keep going at it, keep going at it, keep going at it. And you're like, I think it's clean. Because you look at it and you're like, well, the, the there's, paper's there's, clean. There's no more but there's, a, there's actually a chance you just moved it. <laughs> but I know that they took the hose to me. <laughs> it, is, it does make a lot of sense that a bidet makes a lot of sense. Every you know? other country, every other country. It has a bidet. They decided... The best way to clean my butt is with water. Well, I think it's starting to come around here because, I mean, you've got one. I, my brother's got one. I don't have one. This means you have a dirty butt. Maybe. I don't know. I want to get one. Except for my it first... It cost me like... Yeah, no, they're super cheap. They're 50 like bucks, 30 maybe, bucks, for a really bucks. good one. Yeah. Uh, bidets are uh, a good idea. I will say that I have had the bidets for two years, and it... T just recently, I was like, I should install those. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, they were just yeah. above every toilet oh, really? in my house. Well, I was so sick of working on my house. I, it took me two years to like finish renovating my house. And yep. so at the end of it, I mean, I, the bidets were the last thing I was thinking about. Yep. But every day I woke up and I thought, shit, is today the day I install the bidets? <laughs> Nah. Oh, nah, I did that for like. <laughs> Let's wait seven hundred more days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. What Let's wait. Let us wait another six hundred fifty-nine days. <laughs> that's funny. So here we are. Nice. Now you got a bidet. Oh, and just like any other thing that I procrastinated at, uh, it took me ten minutes to get one installed. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's wow. <laughs> I've been. I've thought about installing these more than the time it took to install them. There's multiple things that I need to do around my house. Yeah. And uh, when I finally do them, yeah, it takes me about ten minutes, and I procrastinate it for but don't at you least kinda, months. Don't you kind of save those up as like currency to get laid with? <laughs> <laughs> no, if anything, it helps. <laughs> I, it makes it to where I don't get. <laughs> That's my point. Is that you just if you have enough of them stacked up, you can use them like kind of like cash in your wallet. Yeah. Like, honey, I... <laughs> honey, I did the I dishes. did the thing. You know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honey, you know that thing you told me to do two years ago? <laughs> I, I did, did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting lucky today? <laughs> or what? <laughs> <laughs> so you strategically don't do the things so you can save them for later. Yeah, another uh, uh, something that I'm also bad at is. It doesn't like, work, does it? Mm, not really. Um, <laughs> uh, the other day, my wife somehow, I don't know if it was my wife or my kids, but somebody managed to unlock the garage. You know that little the little cord with the little red thing at the bottom of it? Oh, you, yeah. You pull it, and then the garage is unlocked. Look, I, I can do a lot of stuff. I can fix just about anything in my house, mm -hmm. I can do some minor mechanic work. I can uh, pretty much build an electric guitar. Yeah. 
but I have no idea what the hell had to do whenever <laughs> the red cord gets pulled <laughs> on the garage door. <laughs> I'm like, ah, damn it. I don't know how to What do this. I do? What, uh, what, no. what am I supposed to do with this? Anyways, anyways, <laughs> all you have to do is push the garage back into it and it relocks. But what oh, happened see? is... <laughs> I mean, what happened is, is, you know, whenever you're, you lose your electricity, you pull that so you can use your garage door. Oh, okay. Okay, so either my kids or my wife pull that and then they pressed the button to shut the garage but it wasn't locked so as it was pushing the garage door shut yeah. eventually the garage just went shh, and like hit the ground real hard yeah, go, 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 yeah. and broke a window in my garage and on uh, on the garage door wow and lauren is like a garage door's broke i was like oh and it shattered one of our windows and i was like dang it oh that sucks and so i get home and i look at the garage door and it doesn't look broke to me, so I just lift it, relock it, yeah, and realize that oh my god, it's not broken. Someone just unlocked this. But the window's broke now. But now the window's broke. Is it like a roundy window? It's it's like a, just a little square one. It probably yeah. wouldn't take me that long to fix. But it's one of those things where it's like oh god. Well, I guess I'm gonna tell all the robbers <laughs> about this now. <laughs> what? Unless. You give me twenty dollars. <laughs> oh, I see. You're blackmailing. <laughs> yeah, for I, I'm gonna call the robbers. One eight hundred robbers. One eight hundred robbers. Excuse me. Is I this, know the house. Oh, this is cops. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying. To I always get those robbers. numbers mixed up. <laughs> <clears throat> nah, Anyways. robbers are just down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I know this guy. His window's broken. Real easy access. <laughs> Anyways, that that created work for me, and uh, I should really just do it, but I have still not. Done it to the replacing day. the window in the garage door, yeah. Haven't done it yet, and I, it, it probably annoys my neighbors. They're like, Look at that guy with his broken, yeah. Look at that guy, his window's been broken for months. Oh, it's been months, probably. You didn't even like cover it with something, no, no. I just don't want to do it, but I should do it. Also, I need to clean my gutters, haven't done that either. Should do it. Hmm, a lot of things you could just put a bucket from the inside over it, and then birds would live in it. <laughs> there we, I can make a birdhouse. And then the guy who sticks his hand in there, <clears throat> he touches, gets, he touches gets, the bird nest. Gets attacked by birds. Yeah, or the birds or are just gets like, ah! Kind of, <laughs> or gets some kind of bird disease. I don't know. And then it'll change his life after that. You, fall, you could put some sort of, you could put Nickelodeon's Gak in there, and then he'd be like, oh, gross. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Give you a prank. A you could prank the robber. There you go. Prank the robbers. Yeah, do something better with your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, but I probably won't do that. I know. It also sounds like work. All right, I pre-picked I pre out a bunch of these. Okay. So are there topics of conversation today? Uh, yes, there okay. are on some of these. All right. This is Hot Takes. Okay. It's a, it's a game that has some hot takes. But only some. I'd rather go on a vacation to the mountains and the beach. You want to talk about mountains versus beach right now? I want to know. Well, for me, um, you know, I hate going to the mountains thinking there's going to be an ocean. So that makes me mad. Oh, really? yeah. You go to the mountains yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. there's so going to be an ocean? Yeah, so it depends on what it is I'm trying to do. Okay. If I'm trying to ski <clears throat> and then I go to the beach and there's no snow, okay. that makes me really upset. I think it also kind of makes you stupid. <laughs> if you're like, I'm going to go to the mountains <laughs> to find a beach. I'm gonna go to the beach <laughs> to ski on the mountains. Is that what? Is that? A, uh, I guess what I'm trying to tell you, Jared, yeah. is both are really cool. Mm-hmm. I'll tell. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Which mountains? Whatever mountains that you like the most. Okay, least favorite mountains wherever Al Qaeda is right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not into those. <laughs> those yeah, mountains. yeah, yeah. So if I go down there and some guys are like. <laughs> I'm like, the no, worst vacation. stop Al Qaeda. This is this is not the mountains. Okay, but favorite mountains? Mm. Oh my god. Do you, you remember Dumb and Dumber? Yeah. Okay, so do you remember whenever they were, they took the wrong highway? Yeah. And they're going to Colorado, but they ended up in Nebraska. Yeah. And then he's like, that Don Denver's full of shit. <laughs> do you remember <laughs> talking about? Yes. That's okay. Uh I've been to those mountains. Very nice. Very nice mountains. Nice. It looked just like Dumb and just Dumber. Just like Dumb and Dumber? Yeah. It's great. I took one of those shits in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh man, I forgot about that scene. <laughs> 
<laughs> what a hilarious movie for my yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, okay, but for real, uh, Colorado is really nice. Where we're from, in the, our state, we have, usually people complain about allergies. Yep. And when you get up to the mountains in Colorado, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. It feels like very clean. I also feel like Colorado does have some things really right about how they, uh, the, the town, the individual towns have ordinances yep. about how their buildings are. When I was in Colorado, they won't allow you to build more than two stories if it blocks the view oh, yeah. of the mountains. So everywhere you drive, you can still see the mountains, which is really cool. And it's clean. Yeah. You know, so the roads are always awesome in Colorado for some yeah. reason, and it's clean all the time. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, well, I was just in uh, Colorado in August, I yeah. believe, and it was awesome. Uh, we went on a hike up a mountain. Yeah. And it was one of the hardest hikes I had ever done. Yeah. And it wasn't even really like a hard hike. It was just because the, the air is like so thin. Right. I lost my breath constantly. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that, that's one yeah. of the things. You feel it extra fat. Extra fat. <laughs> no, yeah, like felt very fat. <laughs> like I need, a, I need a slice of cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have a beer close? I think I need that to get to the top. <laughs> yeah, it was it was super fun. And the view once we got to the top of the mountain, man, the view was awesome. It yeah. was worth every single struggle to get up to the top of there. Uh, but yeah. So are, are you a mountains over beach person? Uh, no, I think I like beaches more than mountains. Why? But because I have so many fun memories attached to the beach right now. Like uh, yeah. it, whenever me and Lauren go on tropical vacations, yeah, we usually go to a beach, to some all-inclusive resort, mm. and people just treat us like royalty, bring us all our food and our drinks. I'm for never going to feel sorry for you about anything ever again. You've never been to an all-inclusive resort? No, that sounds awesome. But they're not that expensive. You can not? Go, no, they're super, super cheap. So do you feel bad for the people that are serving you? No, they're, they're, they're like, all enjoying. I work for $3 they're, a day. No, <laughs> they're <laughs> all loving their life. They're all super, they all love what they do. I, I, I mean, that's, that's the other thing about these uh, all-inclusive resorts is everybody's in such a good mood because we're all on vacation. Oh, yeah. And then 98% of the people there that they're serving on are all drunk and just super nice. Like, oh, you're the best, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Bob, give me your favorite drink. Here's $5. And Bob's like, oh, yes. He's yes. like, I'm catching everybody on their best day. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he, Constantly. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you work at those all-inclusives and everybody's buzzed, they're all, everybody's tossing out tips. Yeah. So I'm sure they make good money. Uh, whether they're in, we've been to Mexico, we've been to the Dominican Republic, St. Lucia. Uh, and there's, they're so fun. Um, yeah. so I think beach because I have so many fun uh, memories attached to it, but I hate the sun because <laughs> because it kills you. It's your, you're allergic. It will literally kill me <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I'm in it for too long. Um, so the mountains are better for that, but the mountains aren't beach. necessarily better for that though. Well, I mean, if I'm in the, have you ever been ski on a ski trip and burned your face? I've been on That's a ski happened to trip, me. and I have not burned my face now. Yeah, because like, like you get up in the mountains, and you're actually the atmosphere's thinner. You're actually literally closer. Yeah, closer to the sun. And then the, the sun is reflecting off the snow. That's true. You can get sunburns up there. In, I I've never experienced the, the Yeti. sunburn from a reflection of the snow onto my face. Never, it's never happened to me. Mm, it's happened to me. Hmm. I've been sunburned on the mountains. That's that's gotta suck. It, well, you know, I had snow gear on, so it's like yeah. only my face. So it wasn't that bad, but yeah. Well, anyways, yeah, you should do an all-inclusive resort. You should, uh, you should do it soon. You could probably do it. You could go to Mexico right now. Yeah. For like a three-day. Yeah. For like Friday to Sunday. Yeah. Under under thousand dollars. Yeah, for one person. For one person. Yeah, but that's a thousand dollars. That's like that. That's as the same as my. Japanese jazz bass. Yeah, but that's a memory. Ah, yeah. That's a memory. A jazz bass pays me $250 a night. There you go. Use that jazz bass four times. <laughs> and then I will not eat. And then I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go take a, 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 a trip. No, I'm with you. I, I should travel more. Yeah. I, uh, women are great for making me travel. That's great. Yeah, I, mean, I don't yes, want, they I, are. I, don't, I can they care. They absolutely are. I know that people, uh, 
They love travel. Mm -hmm. Love it. I love. I I do hate this when you're swiping through some dating per, per, you know profiles and yep. then and the person thinks that traveling is their personality. Oh yeah. Like that's not a personality. You don't get that's. I love spending extra money and not making any money. <laughs> that's what that says. I love spending someone. I love spending your money. That's when you. What do you do when for you're living? doing the swiping? Spend your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, "What makes me happy? I just love to travel. It makes me feel uh, myself." I'm like, "You are expensive, and <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not worth it." Oh man. Uh, it just means you want me to. Pony up the cash so, yeah. so you can be yourself. Yeah, well, let me just work some more real quick so you can go do that. <laughs> no, actually, Lauren's been great at, at making me uh, have more experiences. I wouldn't have done like half the things we've done if Lauren wasn't. I know, I know that's my point. Is like, yeah, it's, it's awesome. If, but if my, my girlfriend was like, we need to travel, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. All right. It's good. No, it's good. Strap me to the airplane. You need, a, you need a pound. Can it be cheaper if I, if I could just get in the in the luggage? Yeah. Can, can, I, just, <laughs> can I go under the plane with all the uh, with all the suitcases? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but seriously, you listen. Money comes and goes. Memories last for forever. Yeah. Money is actually just except for when your brain doesn't work anymore. <laughs> well, oh, all these memories I saved up. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Well, you know, actually, even whenever that moment happens, your your brain still keeps some of some it? some things in like recorded forever. Like the PTSD one moments, like the Saving Private Ryan situation. No. <laughs> no. I was. Watching... I'm sorry. I'm just being cynical. <laughs> yes, you are. Like, like all my memories delete, but like all my car crashes. <laughs> I wake up every day thinking of at a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, uh, travel, travel some, but not too much, you know. Yeah, sure. Travel some, but not too much. Yeah. Don't make it your identity, Donnie. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> they should stop teaching cursive in schools. No. <clears throat> All these little kids, these punk. Oh my god. I'm a teacher. So, you know, I do a lot of uh, edu educating young folks, which I, I do adore. These little people, they are so fun. But none of these kids can write in cursive anymore, and that's stupid. When, but when's the last time you used cursive yourself? What? Uh, all the time. You Anytime I handwrite a card for another human being. You write it in cursive? Absolutely. No, oh, no, I don't do that. Yeah, so I think, I think so. Uh, cursive, even though it's functionally... The argument is there. It's not useful. It doesn't, um, you know, it's not necessarily a skill that is objectively useful. Yeah. It represents you. Your handwriting represents you in a weird, and not in a weird way, in a very obvious uh, permanent sense. Like if I'm going to write a note and I write it, and I have something unique to me that I'm good at. And I remember as a, as a third grader, when we were learning cursive, I was like, this is a skill I can be really good at because mm -hmm. I'm good at drawing because mm -hmm. I'm a little artistic kid. I remember that being a real uh, boost of my self-esteem. Was how good you yeah. cursived? And m both of my parents were very, had very good handwriting. They still do. They, they still do. And so and my mom's left-handed, so she pushes across the page from left to right instead mm -hmm. of drags. Mm -hmm. So her handwriting is very special. It's light. She has a very light touch. And, and her cursive is just beautiful. Yeah. And it's very script-like because she, when, when we learned cursive, I don't know if you, those of you are listening, there were three lines. There was a dot, dotted line in the middle and then a line on the top and a line on the bottom. And every letter was to fit in those three lines and the lowercase ones were supposed to fill up half. Yep. And the the uppercase filled. Yep. You know the whole of it. And I don't know. It just there's a dignity in it. Yeah. Like this represents me. I'm gonna write this note. I'm gonna mail it. I'm gonna give it to someone in their birthday present, their Christmas present, whatever. This thank you card. This get well soon card. And then I have a signature. The way that I write my name is particular to me. Yep. No one can write my name like I do. It's my mark. It, it represents me. And I love everything about that. And so the fact that we would take that from children uh, just makes our 
society less individualistic, and I think that's a problem. Have they stopped teaching cursive in schools? I don't actually know. Oh, yeah, no, these kids don't know. They don't know. I need to ask my, my nieces and They have iPads things. now. Yeah, this, that's, what I was, yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking is, is the signature is probably just going to switch to like an E signature. Yeah. So, the, so the, the need for cursive at this point, I think, is really... Man, I'm, what, what I'm you sorry. Just said, what you just said, the need for cursive is so we can all have our own individualized signature. Yeah. But that's already coming kind of irrelevant with the digital world we're in right oh, now. But I so. hate that concept. Yeah. The digital signature is so cold and, yep. and lifeless. And also, uh, do you like having a number, <laughs> like a series of zeros and ones being no. your signature? No. No. No, not at all. There's something in inhuman about it. I don't yep. like it. Um, so I think that cursive should still be taught in schools. Yeah. Even though think? the only time I ever use it is just to sign my name. That's the yeah. only time I use it. Whenever yeah, and, I write on a card, your signature I, is I, hilarious. I, I, I know I what your J looks like. It's, it's kind of awesome. Looks like, I've, it looks like a I've hook. mastered. I've mastered. I, mm -hmm. I use eight, 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 <laughs> eight little bars for yeah. my J, and then you know, just do, 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 do. I know because I've seen your signature recently. Yep. Your W is this floppy. Yeah. And then there's the scribbles. Yes. Yeah, after the J, I get my and after J real w. good, and I get my W with the little thing, and then and scribbles. then it just and it, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's great. It's in all my yearbooks. It's in all your yearbooks. Yeah. Nice. You know, I remember the yearbooks. Yeah. I brought them in here. Yeah. It's a great, great signature. So you think? Do you, but do you think your kids should know it? Yeah, I think they should. It's like a piece of history. Basically, well, I guess it feel, feels like it's going to be a piece of history. How can they even make their own Declaration of Independence without cursive? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, they can't even declare independence. They'll just make, they'll just use an AI robot to generate one. That doesn't sound very independent. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dependent. <laughs> they can't even declare independence anymore. Literally, literally in like a hundred years, uh, everybody's going to be using robots for everything and then the emp is going to come and mess destroy all up, everything and everyone's else. just going to be like what do we do can you imagine the next declaration anymore. of independence being in new times roman at 12 point <laughs> <laughs> double spaced <laughs> on some eight and a half by 11 <laughs> yeah and then we're supposed to think that's cool that's not cool man well not a big not a big fan nope all right now, nah, let me ask the question. What is this? I don't know. I liked them all, though. I can't remember right. them. Uh, do you think aliens will find us before we find them? Yes. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. You think we'll find the aliens first? Yeah, I'm ready to kick some ass. But that's your instinct? Yeah, as soon as we build what something... What if they're nice? It, okay, I'm gonna get, but I ain't going to go find the aliens. What if another version of Listen, you is the alien? Have you seen Alien? I saw Alien recently. The I've movie. seen lots. Have you seen Independence Day? Yeah, and we beat them too. Have you seen ET? Yes. What if that was a friendly alien? You think <laughs> you think they're gonna be like that? Yeah. Smaller than us. Have you unthreatening. seen Lilo and Stitch? <laughs> Stitch was like a little pet. No, Stitch was a t Stitch. He w okay, we only like him mm -hmm. because we kind of like because we got to follow him as the protagonist. But if you were any other character in that whole show, you'd be like Stitch <laughs> is a problem for everyone. He's a menace. Yeah, he was bit. He's com he committed. Was he committed menace. like eight felonies in that movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. he was a cute felon. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he's a problem. We, if, if Stitch was a real person, we would have locked him up. <laughs> He'd be like oh, life you, sentence. You little felon. You're, <laughs> You're definitely not gonna get it. Um, no, I feel like for real though. Um, if we invented the technology to be able to visit the aliens, we also better bring huge guns. Like, huge ways to defend ourselves. Because my, my, my thoughts are that Alien is going to be more like the Alien versus Predator movies. Oh, really? <laughs> more than it is going to be like, you know. New friends! Hey, they're just like, look just like us, and they're like, hey, but they're just like a little different looking. Like, yep. hey, <laughs> our internet goes twice as fast. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, what if aliens are just like <laughs> huge nerds, just huge friendly nerds? What if they're like, hey, we saw if... you uh, through our gigantic telescopes, and we thought, mm, let's say hey. <laughs> what if they saw about... 
the la- <laughs> we thought you guys were pretty cool, but for the last 15 years, your movies have sucked, so we didn't show up. We figured you'd come to us <laughs> yeah. when you fixed your movies. What if that's Our like- version of Phantom Menace was actually way better. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't all this, like, rehashing A New Hope, and then like, oh, this is pod racing. <laughs> we actually made it cool. Darth Maul didn't die. Darth Maul didn't die at this one. Darth Maul died later in a revenge plot because it could have made sense for the whole trilogy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, the aliens are just to hate our movies. Excuse me. That would be hilarious if the aliens just hated our movies, so they didn't hate. They didn't like yeah. us anymore. Your movies suck. What if they were just friendly nerds that just got bored and were like, let's go say hey to those aliens? Yeah, I just yeah, I think. I don't think we'll find him first, probably. I just, if I do, I'm going out there with a big stick. You're going out there with a big stick? Yeah, yeah. But what if, what if their move is just to test us and be like, let's <laughs> see how we act, and we decide to bring a big stick and hit him with it, and they're like, well... I didn't say hit them with we it. We didn't want to do this, Listen, but you guys just th- hit no, no, him with no, no, a big no. stick, no, so... No, I did not say... Blow this up This is the Earth. same thing as if we go outside right now and we go look for a hornet's nest. Right. Am I going to bring something to defend myself? Yes. Am I going to poke the, the hornet's nest when we find it? <laughs> no. That didn't say, I didn't say we're going to go kick, First problem, kick their asses why are for we no reason. <laughs> to see if there are hornets. <laughs> we, we know there's hornets. I mean, if you know they're out. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Okay, so do you know about these Japanese murder hornets? Yes. Okay, yes, did you yes. did you watch how the bees figured out how to beat those things? Uh, I, did you I did like you see did. any of the documentaries on those? I saw a little snippets of it. Okay, Tell okay, this it. is this is this is I can't believe I brought this up. This is my favorite thing to talk about recently because I watched this extremely violent like nature documentary of <laughs> of this about these hornets. So in Japan, their bees are buff ninja bees and they know exactly what to do about these hornets they don't deal with them like they, they, they're like right yeah but our bees are stupid and don't know what to do our mm. bees are idiots so the murder hornets they're called murder hornets because they come into a nest and they have these jaws that are like like huge and they're huge enough to just bite a bee's head off wow and so what they do is they they come in and they're like where's the honey and the bees are like, <laughs> we're not telling you. And then he's like, all right, chomp. And then he just starts oh, no. chopping heads off, right? And he walks around on a rampage, just murder, 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 murder. Well, so the bees are just like, oh, decapitated all over the place. And then he finds the honey and he's like, all right. And he eats, right? Yep. And, he, and then he probably, I don't know, lays eggs in the nest and is like, ha, <laughs> or whatever, whatever it is yep. that, that these things do. Anyways, the bees have no idea what to do because American bees are stupid. But in Japan, they figured it out. Bon- Amer- a Japanese honeybees can handle one degree hotter. Oh, right. I did see this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what they'll do is they'll swarm the dude. Yeah, they dogpile him and, and then they all just, just shake. Yeah. Until they get so hot that they cook him. Yeah. And he's out trying to cut heads off. Oh, get off of me. It's getting real hot in here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the Japanese bees know how to do that, and American bees forgot. Wow. Or whatever. They, they look exactly the same, but just American bees are idiotic. So we actually have a little training camp for the bees now. Really? We have little bee classes and a little tiny... Is this real? No. <laughs> <laughs> and the little scientist bees are like, we've noticed how to... <laughs> What's that? that? For some reason, it reminds me of, like, um, Mulan. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. Bee, Mulan. Uh, <laughs> that's bees. <laughs> the trading the... sequence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the bees. <laughs> it's like, buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> What's this what song? It's Be a Man. What's that song? Yeah, to be a man. <laughs> But it's be a bee. <laughs> be, a, be a bee. And they're doing all that. <laughs> be a bee. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we have to do that. We haven't had the training montage. <laughs> for, for the bees, for yeah. The, yeah. But anyways, the murder hornets got on the boat. They're like, we're going to the U.S. And, like, they hopped into a bunch of PlayStations. Is and, that really what they And they, they came it? over here. 
Was it PlayStation? No, it was PlayStation's. I wouldn't I, be surprised. <laughs> inside the PlayStation box. <laughs> ha, bitch, it's me, a murder Surprise, hornet. murder hornet. <laughs> chop, 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 chop. <laughs> <laughs> These bees are weak. They haven't had a training montage. <laughs> they don't know no. how to be a bee. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's a big problem in, uh, in, in the Seattle, like, Oregon, like, up on yeah, the West Coast. Is that where Coast. they all are? Seattle. Yeah, they're, those bees are stupid and dying because the murder hornets and so they're having to search for the hornets and kill them for the bees we're, we're gonna here to help you bees wow. that's why I, I know it's a long way around in conversation but you said why would we go outside and look for the hornets because we want to know if they're murder hornets. no because we have to save the bees because okay. the bees pollinate our food yep that's why have Jared. you seen the bee movie no. Oh my God, it's actually really good. Is it really good? It's actually really good. And uh, it has Jerry Seinfeld as like the, the, bee, the, yeah. the bee guy. And that's basically what what happens in the movie. Oh, is, they have to learn how to train Jerry the bees. Seinfeld uh, like sues America or the world for using all their honey <laughs> oh. because they never get a day off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bees finally get a day off and everything <laughs> dies. <laughs> Like like flowers. Oh, and all that stuff. yeah. And then they're like, oh, wait, we're bees. Oh, wait. So, what is the moral of the story? Uh, the moral of the story is I think the Is that you have to be like, a slave? No. Is that is that, no, is that, is that, no. is that what I think the moral us? of the story is more just like the importance of bees. Because uh, that's what it made uh, me real. It made me like bees. Uh, I already like bees. Well, I, I like them now. Okay. I'm As glad, I was a kid, I was converted. always like, bees suck. I hate bees, they just sting. Oh, I've only ever been stung by stuff that's not really... I know I got stuck by one bee, and that was like, ow. And then... Why did the bee sting you? Probably because... Were you messing with it? I was close enough to the nest that it was like, ah, the queen! The qu Protect the queen! <laughs> yeah. No, I, I've never been stung by a bee, and I've realized now, like, I'm not, I used to be afraid of bees when I was a kid. I'm more freaked out by wasps. I think wasps should... They don't serve a purpose. Yeah, they don't serve a purpose. I Let's feel just, like, destroy just them. Wasps. Let's just, yeah. Yep. I hate wasps. You're just here to kill bees, I'm, and I'm not into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and just to invade my house sometimes. Like, sometimes a random wasp gets into my house, and it makes me so mad. Usually when I find a wasp, though, at that point, it's always like... <laughs> 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 it's next to the window. Let me out. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you out. <laughs> <laughs> it's next to the window, and it's been there all day, trying to fly out. And it's cooked from the sun. <laughs> It's like you don't ever see a wasp in your house. It's like <laughs> they're usually like I'm too trapped in here for a really long time. I can't find any water. Uh, anyways, bees are awesome. All right, uh, I had a couple notes here that I wanted to uh, to go in. Oh, you can read one more though. If you want to read? Uh, one more. And then I'll get in my notes. Nah. What did you? You, you never. Uh, you never answered the question about aliens. Oh. <coughs> aliens. Aliens first or us first? Uh, I think aliens would find us first. Why? Why would they want to even come over here? <laughs> I, I think because I assume that their <laughs> technology is going to be better than ours. Oh. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe the aliens out there actually have worse technology than us. I mean, if they haven't found us yet, probably, they, yeah, that kind of makes sense. There's like, so our telescopes are getting so large now that we've actually been able to see other planets super duper far away that are potentially like super earths super earths yeah the, the telescopes now make me feel bad about my telescope oh yeah yeah like when i go out and i look at my telescope i go that's a uh, not a very big telescope oh really yeah mm. <laughs> I, but it's only telescope I got, so <laughs> I just I, I just deal with it. I thought you always felt bad about your telescope. No, I, I my telescope's fine. <laughs> but then but then but then when the new telescopes yeah. come out, yeah, it makes me feel a little bad. Anyways, <laughs> there's there's potential several planets out there like super earths or another or like another versions of earth yeah. that have the potential to have life on it so that makes me think aliens are pretty much a guarantee in my opinion like they're out there somewhere yeah i've heard that like the goldilocks zone like the like the certain amount of far far enough away from its sun yeah that's that's actually more common yeah than we thought so uh it's just a matter of time in my opinion not a matter of fact but Pretty strong opinion that 
we're going to find some kind of life out there. Do you remember, and I'm going to name names, do you remember this kid who lived next door to me named Eric? Yeah. Do you remember him? Yeah, I think you've talked about it a little bit. He was a bully, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, his life sucked, but I kind of feel like aliens are just going to be Eric. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's why I'm not interested. And, and they probably think of us the same way. You know what I mean? They're like, we're not going to their neighborhood. Look, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even if they are the closest, why would I go visit them? Actually, how I hope aliens are, are from that Tim Allen movie, <gasps> Galaxy Quest. Yeah, they're idiots that watch our TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I hope it is. Like, they're actually really smart, but also really dumb. And they come here and kidnap <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> 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 William Shatner's like, I am not a real spaceman. <laughs> they take him away. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you, you are. are. You are our last one. <laughs> It's actually uh, a really funny concept for a movie. <laughs> the aliens watch Star Trek and think that that's what we're really like. Yeah. And they think that the Federation of Planets is real. Oh, man. It was such a... I watched it again the other day, and it's still just as funny. It was such a hilarious movie. Galaxy Quest. But that came out when we were, like, 11 or 12. Like, I remember you renting it at a yeah. Blockbuster. And then and, I went over to your house and watched it. And, it. and you loved it. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, it was great. It, you should watch it again with uh, Mandy. I will. It's it's still just as good. Is that funny? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and there's a lot of people in there that you would recognize now that we didn't recognize back then. Yeah? Like Dwight's in it. No way. From The Office. He's in it. Yeah. He's in it? Yeah, he's what, in it. He's, what does he play? He's, he's one of the, the aliens. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Jared, would you like to be immortal? I don't know if I'd like to be immortal, but all I think your, I all would. All your friends would die. Huh? All your friends would die. And then you'd have to make new friends every 80 years. I guess I'm thinking more of it along the concept of like human humans as an entirety, like our lifespan. I don't think I'd want us to be immortal. There'd be nine billion of us. Yeah, I think there'd be too many people for every generation. Immortality makes sense as long as everybody gets the snip snip. <laughs> <laughs> At a certain time. Yeah, yeah, certain yeah, yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, this is gonna get out of, out of hand. But uh, <laughs> I think it'd be I think it'd be cool if like our lifespan was a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Like maybe two hundred years, and we got like the the the. Only if you thirty to forty age range lasted from from like something to eighty, from like thirty to one hundred and seventy. Yeah, that way we get like a really long time of living young, or living like not super young, but mm -hmm. like in the, the sure. mid tier. I think that'd be great, but I don't think I'd want to live. I don't. I don't think I'd want to be immortal. Yeah, I think. We, I mean, we basically, based off how we believe, we basically are. We're gonna go to heaven for eternity after this. Right, that's... Which is also kind of, like, mind-blowing a little bit. Like so hard... the immortality question is kind of nil because we, you know, we think that our souls continue on into the afterlife. Yeah. Of some kind, some kind of afterlife. I think that... Uh, I actually have changed how I think about that. I think that when we die, we just die. But, as Christians have believed for bazillions of years like 2000 years or whatever that Christ will return and raise people from the dead which is a wild belief. So what do you That's crazy to me. So you're saying that we're going to die mm -hmm. and then Jesus is going to come back we, and we're going to resurrect. We have, we, have, we have the hope of resurrection. Yeah, well, that's what Christians have always believed. So there's no heaven? Uh no there is the idea of heaven as an as an eternal destination is actually not as biblical as like if you just read the text, mm -hmm. that we actually believe that Christ will make the world new upon his return. Mm. Like, and the second coming, that, that's what Christians believe. And that's kind of where I've kind of landed. Mm. The, like what we believed as like, well, we're going to get raptured and go to heaven or, or when we die, our souls just go straight there, like free pass. Pew. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you believe in the rapture? I no. Nah. I don't, I don't think I do either. I don't, I, I don't know if I buy it. I don't, at least not in the Omega code. Right. <laughs> One and two <laughs> yeah. left behind since. No. But, 
But I, I think that whenever whenever Christians talk about resurrection, and and we talk about the new like like a new a new earth like a, like a perfected earth that is like doesn't have the things flies, that flies mosquitoes. Well, I mean like like when we talked about suffering at the beginning of the beginning of this podcast. Yeah, I think that. I do have this hope that there is something in there's a, there's a greaterness a, a a power willing the universe into being the way that it is and it will set things to right right <clears throat> at some point that the the long arc of history will will will, will bend towards justice <clears throat> I do believe that and I I don't really care what form it takes or how it does it but I do believe that that's happening, and I do have hope in that. And then, like, my Christianity actually underpins that hope. Mm -hmm. You know? And I don't care how it's done. Uh, like, I, like, do you... Do you? I remember when we were growing up, our parents didn't... Maybe, maybe your parents. I don't know what your parents thought, but my parents were like, uh, evolutionists are... Uh, deceiving us that they're not right that the, the earth is only this like 10,000 years old and because it's right. all that we have in recorded history and da, 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 da. like what do you think about all that stuff now how, how old do I think the earth actually is or? yeah like like do you are you like are you on for the theory of evolution as and then combined with like biblical uh, kind of meta narratives instead of like scientific fact or do you what do you think uh, I think evolution could have happened, but I think it was like, and I think the earth is actually lo pretty old. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just like not recorded. So yeah. The old earth. Like super, super, what's the word I'm looking for? Like really mm, Christians, you know, Yeah. they, they, they can't think past what the Bible says, so that they, oh, like, they, you're talking they about won't fundamentalists, like, yeah, like people yeah, who say it, the, the, whatever the Bible says, it, it word for word, it happened exactly like that. Yeah, which I don't, I, you know, the Bible was was uh, translated multiple times, and humans are flawed. So why mm. wouldn't some of our flaws wind up in the Bible? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you think that I just, I'm just running this by you. You think that the Bible could be in error? I think some of it could be. Absolutely. Oh. I think, think it, it's not a wild idea to think that that's a possibility. Our because parents would highly disagree with you. I I know a lot yeah. of a lot of a lot of people would, but I, yeah. I don't. It just seems really logical to me that there would be some kind of error in there. Not to say that there there that there's a bunch yeah. or anything like that. I'm just thinking logically. Well, I mean, the fact that we have multiple translations of the Bible that don't agree with each other exactly would show like, that which that's one true. of these is it is <laughs> yeah, it right is it king james over here that you were shoving down my throat I think for my whole life or was it is it this niv thing you guys keep bringing <laughs> yeah. up or is it i think there's a, a ton of greatness in the bible and i yeah. you know i believe in the bible but i think it's it's to each their own yeah. uh, as far as like how you uh perceive it or or what you get out of it you know what i mean mm. like the overall the overall main story mm -hmm. is be kind to your treat your neighbor as you want mm -hmm. your neighbor to treat yourself or mm -hmm. you know love your neighbor be Total kind moral. to people that's like yeah. the overall moral yeah the basic and that's very clear in the bible but all this other stuff like women shouldn't be pastors like yeah, that's yeah. in the bible and i think that's bull crap oh yeah we've grown past that listen i've been doing so i, I do stuff for my mom's uh, ministry i mm -hmm. i, I mm -hmm. edit a lot of videos for them and one of the mo the most the comment she gets the most mm -hmm. is some dude on the internet man, yeah, dingus head, yeah. saying just posting that on her videos, yeah, and it, and it actually makes me really mad all the time. Yeah, like go, go yourself, but <laughs> like, come on, are you threatened by this by this? Smart. This middle-aged lady. This smart middle-aged <laughs> lady who's speaking truth. Just yeah, like go yeah, yeah. find something better to do. Right. Oh, you must be sad. You're spending mm. five minutes of your day yeah. commenting some bull crap mm. on, on this YouTube, person that's right, not benefiting yeah. anybody else. Oh man, I'm gonna log into my account so I can make a comment on this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel you on that. I uh, I think that the Bible. 
I think that there is truth that is deeper than, like it's metaphorical truth can be deeper yeah. than the actual reality. So like if, you know, what is there, 66 books and 44 authors or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I got those wrong. I've had, def, probably yeah, definitely no, had the no, number of those good dudes wrong, but if any of those guys make a mistake as far as factual um, account or, you know, did Jonah actually get swallowed by a whale and then live inside the whale for three days and then get yacked back out up on a beach? No, I don't think that happened. But do I think that the metaphorical truth of Jonah being like, I'm going to resist the calling of my life. And then when he chose to embrace the calling of his life and do what he knew he was supposed to do, that things turned around for him. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the metaphorical truth is deeper than whether or not it actually happened or not. Mm -hmm. For sure. And so then whenever people like, like, you know, I remember our friend Josh, yeah. Guitar player. Yep. Plays with me, but also we were friends with him back in the day. Yep. He is no longer a Christian, I don't think. I think he would say that he's not a Christian if you asked him. But he would say, I love the Bible alongside this other stuff that that he's gotten into, mm -hmm. different religions that he's read, and he's like, he loves truth. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that <clears throat> when you're searching for the truth, there is a, mm, there's a ton of it in the Bible. Yeah. And maybe, maybe most of it in the Bible, maybe the lion's share of it. So I, and then my Christianity is a lived experience. I've, I've experienced things through Christianity that make me think this yeah, is this where, is this it. is where I'm hitching my, my yep. wagon. Same here. You know? Same so, here. If I, if I hadn't experienced certain things in my life, I think I, I probably would have yeah. moved on. Right, but I, I've, I've experienced certain things in my life that made it feel too real, mm. uh, to not believe in it. Like that deeper truth, the metaphorical truth yeah. that somehow shines through whenever you're embracing Christianity, is too deep to not take a second look at. And I don't really think of myself as a religious person. I think of myself as like a a guy who has a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. That's, that's the whole other thing, too, is we're talking about something completely different when we're talking about the Torah or, like, the Old Testament or whatever. Whenever we talk about Christianity, we're specifically referencing this idea of this personhood of Jesus who says that they were God. Mm -hmm. and Or, like, they were the Son of God, which is a ridiculous claim. Like, either Jesus was a complete lunatic, like, absolute insane human being, or he was right. Mm-hmm. And something happens to me whenever I embrace this concept that Jesus was what he said he was, and then you read his words through that lens. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. When you have an encounter like that, there's something full of life about yep. that that jumps out at you. And so I haven't shaken it off yet. Nope. Uh, I've heard a lot of people get down in the mouth about it, and they fair enough to them. Right, it's an insane claim, especially like virgin birth, death, burial, resurrection. All those things right. are insane. I have no words to, to combat the average atheist about that. No, I, but it's but the proof's in the pudding. There's something, uh, and then and then, man, we we really flew by this episode. Uh, there's some Pete Holmes said that was hilarious. That's along the lines of, of this. Yeah. So he said, uh, "I'm going to butcher some of it, but basically, he's like, so there's people that believe in God, yeah, and there's people that believe that we came from nothing, yeah, and I've heard this bit, yeah. And in 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 my mind, it makes more sense that something created something rather than nothing created something, yeah. And if you don't believe in God." Your creator is basically nothing. Yeah. So when you die, you and you believe in nothing. You join. You morph the with your creator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <of> nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. So it's like it's, so you're kind of just going back. <laughs> and that's I, I kind of land in that Pete Holmes zone for sure. On my more dark days, on my more 
optimistic days, the story of like like the story of the life of Christ, and then like this in in the larger narrative of Christianity, man, there's something special about it. And I don't think Pete has been able to shake it, even though he says, you know, he's this other thing now or whatever. I like Pete a lot. I like what he says about a lot of things, and I think that even though he's not a card-carrying Christian so much as he is a spiritual person. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he's a Christian, but he definitely believes in a he God. He used to be. Yeah, he used to be the, the more in the lines like we were, which is why he's not one anymore. Mm-hmm. My, my embrace of Christianity has happened in my adulthood right. through a more older Christianity, a more... Was there a point in your life where you were like, mm, I'm not too sure about this? Yeah, I was playing in church. I was employed by churches, and I was like, this is not, this can't be, this version of this can't be the right the thing. I still kind of, I still kind of think, being that I, I work on the weekends for a church, that the kind of church that I work for is more akin to a Branson show yeah, than it is to a church service. Oh, really? Because if you go to a mass, if you go to see, if you go downtown to the Catholic church or you go to the Orthodox over next to Tulsa University or you go to any of the other older, like old church, right? All the way back to the first century, you can track the Catholics and the Orthodox to a split that happened a few hundred years after Jesus' death. Like, or I forgot when the East-West split was exactly. I don't want to get all these facts wrong, but basically the church was unified until a point whenever the Orthodox and Catholics split, yep. and then and then it stayed that way for a very long time until the Protestant Reformation. But all that being said, is that if you go into the, one of these older versions of Christianity and you see where people really kind of give a shit about it mm-hmm. and take it very seriously, and they, they've got... Um, well thought out um, answers to a lot of the questions that everyone always has. Now, some of the questions are unanswerable, and that's where, you know, your lived experience fills in whether or not you're going to choose to believe. Yep. But there's, that's where this free will versus uh, predestination right. situation kind of comes in. Is like, is free will even real? I don't know. But Christianity is just on the edge of this thing where it's not undeniable. You can deny it. Right. Or you can choose it. And in that choosing, and you're the deciding factor in there, which is why the free will still exists to me yep. in my mind, you know, or in my life. I feel like I have free will. Um, I say that to say, um, I guess I was just contrasting where the kind of church that I'm at right now, I say is more akin to a Branson show. I would call it high quality Christian entertainment. So they have need for someone like me with my skills to play music. Yep. Right. And I used to think that was so lame. I used to think, well, this is some sort of deceptive tactic that they're using music, this power that music has in people's lives to persuade and to, uh, be the opium of the masses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're just telling these people lies that they're well-meaning and sound good. Um, I no longer think that I actually think of it as, yeah, we're utilizing the tools at hand. Yeah. But I think of the more Protestant, like, like, uh, evangelical denominations as kind of hiking the ball to the more, um, pure versions of Christianity. Like if you're really interested in Christianity and you go to one of these exciting, um, high quality Christian entertainment centers, (laughs) you know what I mean? And you do have some sort of encounter with Jesus and you actually want to know more and more about it. You get more and more interested in the things that the Catholics and the Orthodox are talking about. Yeah. You, you eventually end up there. And so that's kind of what I feel about it. So I have a lot of Catholic friends that I really kind of get a little bit jealous that on Sundays they get to go to mass mm-hmm. whenever I am playing music. Playing music, but I also I've been to masses where I'm like, oh, this is just the same thing. It's just older. They've got this giant cathedral that's meant to orient you towards the the story of Christ, and there just doesn't happen to be 
speakers and there doesn't happen to be electric guitars and drum sets and stuff. It's just hymns and elaborately painted buildings. Yep. You know, and that's not necessarily any better. I feel like if you strip all of Christianity of all of these ornate things, all of these artistic expressions, you get rid of all of them, still there's something at its core. And I feel like if God were to be in the room in a human sense, like as a person, and he walked into either what was happening over at the Catholic Church or he walked into what's happening over at my Protestant situation, um, he'd probably be like, yo, I'm putting a lot on top of this Sunday that don't doesn't need to be there. Right. Like, the, the truth doesn't need all these decorations. Like, mm-hmm. thanks, thanks for using it to convince more people to be around the truth and to hear the truth. And that's, that's kind of the mantra of the church that I work for is we'll do anything, anything uh, short of sin, so anything short of the wrong thing to uh, encourage people to be around it, the truth, right? Which is good. But um, I have a feeling that Jesus would be like, thanks, but no thanks. You know? Yeah, I can see that. How about uh, you go uh, love on some poor people? How about you yeah. take care of some widows and some orphans and, and with your actions show your love? Right. Yeah. That's, that's I, you know, and I, I'm, not, I'm not taking a shot at my, my, my style of church or, right. like, or even at the is. Catholics or the Orthodox or anybody else. Yeah. I just kind of think it's all working together. Yeah. Hopefully bending towards bettering the world. And I think... Yeah, I think whenever... So uh, something that has been misconstrued or maybe misunderstood a lot is like the the idea of tithing and this is just my opinion i could be oh yeah we've been taught a lot about that i could be wrong you explain it to people who don't who've not heard so tithing basically we were raised in churches that taught us that uh whenever you get a paycheck you give 10 percent to church right or, or something along those lines well the idea is that you support your community right that you're within with funds to, to operate but but what, one of the a lot of uh, what was taught on that is uh, the pastors that we grew up listening to would tell us that to get blessed you must tie 10 percent. oh yeah it was a, it was like a along those lines yeah and you will you will double or triple yeah, or double tenfold or, right what you give to the church god will magically give back right. to you and which so, is kind of like a lie yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what would happen to my whenever i was a kid uh right. Something that happened to my parents a few times is they would give 10% yeah. when they didn't have really 10% to give. Right. But they kept doing it because that's what they were taught. Right. So I don't really believe in that at all. I don't believe that you need to give 10%. Well, if I do you're think- not in a spot where you can do it, I think it's good to give. I think it's great to uh, you know bless mm-hmm. those around you whenever you have the ability to bless. And I don't think that giving 10% to a church is necessarily the only way to do it. You can... Yeah. Give fifty dollars to a homeless man if you feel led to do that, or or buy dinner for a family that's struggling financially, or something like that. Like you can give another means other than just to a church. But if you feel like led to give to a church, then give to a church because mm. they're doing a lot of good too. Well, like we we've me and Lauren been going to Guts recently. Really, and, and of uh, all things, and something that they that's do so surprising that was me. super cool to me was they have this distribution center. Yeah. And so what they do at this center is they just buy a crap ton of groceries. Yeah. And then on, I think it was on Fridays, Uh they just open it up. And any family that is struggling with groceries can go to that distribution center and just Uh fill their car up full of groceries. That's really cool. That's super awesome. Yeah. And so like the fact that they're doing stuff like that Mm -hmm. makes me want to be like, yeah, here's my money. I want to help out with that because that's awesome. I see the good in that. Um, but I don't like giving to churches that speak the message of give to get blessed. Yeah, that doesn't make, that's, that's manipulative. Yeah. So that's interesting that I, I kind of think of it like this is that if you decide to join a group of Christians who decide that the thing to do is to have one of these high quality Christian entertainment centers, which is right. what I'm going to call them, yep. because that's what they are. Yeah, and that you want to employ 
a person to create a message and to then give the message every week. That is a ton of work. Right. Okay. And then you want to employ these musicians to play and create this ex spiritual experience that that like jazzes you up for the next week, somehow connects you in a uh, group of people sense, right? What would you say? Right. Congregation, like in a collective sense to something greater than yourself. And all of that has value to you. I think that you should feel obligated to help support that thing because once a week, one day a week, set one out of seven days of a week, you go and you spend two hours over at this place and you want to have that experience, that you should help pay for it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's stupid. That no. makes sense. Like yeah. you're joining a social club that does this thing. Now I know that's reductive and, people, and Christians hate that idea. Like that, like, hey, it's, it's more than that. It's transcended. It's God. We're touching the divine when we do this. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we're kind of getting close. Perhaps, um, I'm not going to judge that for everybody right. else. What I will say is that if you like what's happening, you should support it. Yeah. And 10% of your income, well, it's one seventh of your week. You're spending two hours at this place. I don't know. 10% might be the, the sweet spot. Maybe, maybe less. Maybe less. I don't know. But it depends. But if you also decide that, 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 with this 10% of the money that you are to feed widows and, and, and take care of orphans. That's what I mean, yeah. And do that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah hell yeah, it's 10%. Mm -hmm. Throw in. We're going to change the town. We're right. going to go up north side. We're going to give food away to people who literally don't have food. Yes, I'm in. All the way. And if people argue that that's bad, that's the stupidest thing in the world. Why would you want to dismantle that? Right. Why would you want to dismantle that belief system that creates places that encourages people to donate 10% of their income back to the poor parts of the right. of the city. Like you've got to be the most foolish people in the world. So I, I, I do get a little annoyed at people that want to take the piss out of the church because if you break it, what are you going to put back? <laughs> what are you going to put back? Yeah. What are you going to put back in that, in that hole of society? Right. Number one, people feel like their lives are meaningless. Number two, they're not, they're not joining together and doing anything good. Instead, they're staying at home in their boxers eating Cheetos and <laughs> watching like, porn all day. Like, like, that's what's happening otherwise. Yeah. Put your men to good work. Make them go do stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, I love, I love the things. I love it whenever our, our, our church has this move where they go, hey, if you come in here today and you just don't have what it takes to buy some groceries, just take it out of the offering bucket. Like when the bucket goes by, just to take the money. Really? Yep. Oh my God. I, even if I needed groceries, I don't think I could do that. That'd be embarrassing. You know, like... If you need it that bad, go for it. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. Man, that's pretty awesome. I just, I just wouldn't be able to do it. Well, yeah, maybe you wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. But you would if it was to feed your kids. And that's a heck of a lot nicer place and a heck of a nicer system than having to go like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Wow, it's really cool. Just take uh, yeah. it out of the offering. Just take money. it. Yeah, yeah. Like if you need money, there you go. I'd want to be like, can I? Uh, can I just like go to an office and tell you I need it instead yeah. of just being like, because you know people are bad. People could just be like, yeah, I need groceries. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the risk that everyone in the building decides to take. Right. You know. And believe me, that the, the churches get constant requests for charity I'm because sure. the need is there. Yeah. So, anyways, I don't know. I, I do. I do. This is a side note, but I get really pissed off when people want to take and destroy social institutions that work. Yeah. Oh, you want? You think you think churches are so stupid, Mister Marr, or whatever? That, Bill Marr. Is yeah. That, that you want yeah. that you want to like tell Christians how stupid they are for believing in this thing. Or, is that one of his recent hot takes? No, he's Bill always Mike? been, you know, the whole like atheist movement, the new atheist mm -hmm. movement. Okay, new atheists, I get it. Yes, we're so dumb that we believe in a God, blah, 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 blah. I think we're atheists so are dumb for believing in nothing. It is, it is so stupid to think that nothing created something. It makes I, a lot more sense that nothing did absolutely nothing and something created everything. Yeah, 
But then the question of what created like the if something. You wanna, if you want to think scientifically or logically, yeah. your atheist nothingness beliefs just make no freaking sense at all. Being alive is a, is a quagmire. It's, it's a crazy, yeah. brilliant thing that And exists. I got a little heated there, but it's just because Bill Maher also. Well, I just I just kind of get, I like, I like Bill, though. That's the thing is, I think I, it's I like really funny. I like him, too. But, but it's but, like, I, I just get annoyed at the dismantling of systems that work right already right it works already why why break it you know and then the, there's all these very fair criticisms of large social institutions like the church of its abuses yeah so no. people get into power and they yeah. abuse it yes yep absolutely yes. It happens, yes, yes, it's yes. happened multiple times but if you're going to break it, just put something. You better have a better thing in its place. Right. That's all. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be misused. It has several times. Like, uh, man, we were... Way over? We were way what over. What time is it? But whatever. Uh, we doing okay on time? Like, uh, I will recently... I have to get going here pretty soon. What did you say? I have to get going pretty okay. soon. Uh, have you seen, like, recent videos on Ke Kenneth Copeland? Oh, yeah. People are always... Dogging on him, but he's legitimately kind of wacko. <laughs> yeah. I didn't used to think so. He used to be uh, like Bill Gunner's sidekick gunslinger. I loved awesome. that back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that. He was the cooler of the two. He was. He was I cooler loved it. But than now I'm seeing Gospel Bill. Just recent videos of him and thinking, my God, bud, you, uh, I think you might have lost your mind here a little bit. Well, he's just also old. Lost the light. He's just old. Yeah, he's old. He's like, what, 90 maybe? He's got to be. Yeah. By now. He was old. When he was in, in Bill When Gunner. he was in, yeah, Gospel Bill. Like, yeah, he was old then. Yeah. So we have to remember, like, like we love making fun of Joe Biden. Yeah, he's old. He, you know, he's he sucks, whatever, blah, blah, he blah. He does. He is old and he does suck. But, I mean, this is coming from an honest liberal right here saying I think Joe Biden, he's not fit for office, but. You're a liberal? Yeah, I would say so. Like, like in the traditional sense of the word. Like, mm. I think I think that I should have liberty to I do. Think I should have liberty too. Whatever I can, whatever as long as it's not hurting somebody else, makes me liberal. Makes me more of a libertarian. Yeah, that makes more sense. My political views are complex, for sure. Like, the, like the closer you get to the individual, I think being a liberal and a libertarian the more free you are should quite be. different. Libertarian, yeah. you don't want government. Liberal, you like, hey, hey, government. Yeah. Give me more stuff. Well, that's what it means now. That it is didn't exact, used to be. Well, like, is the, the actual definition... The problem with these words is that they've been co-opted by movements that don't even mean what the word means. Right. So, like, an honest liberal, I can get with. Like, I'm like, I understand. I, I like, like, I saw a video of a guy who was really talking... Uh, it was you thought it was going to be a really anti-trans video, right? Mm -hmm. And this dude gets on there, and you you were just ready for him to be like these freaking you know right sexually deviant weirdos, blah 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 blah. Instead, he was like, "I don't care if you're an adult, what you do, as long as it's not it's none of my business." And right. I'm like, "That's right where I stand. It's yeah. none of my business, and I support and love everyone. Yeah, as long as they're not." Hurting somebody else. As long as they're not hurting somebody else and they're yeah. not trying to get kids involved before at an age where they shouldn't be involved. Yeah, that's exactly right. We don't let them get tattoos. We don't let them drink. We don't let them drive. Right. Why should we let them make lifelong decisions that are irreversible? Exactly. That's where that's I all. stand. I don't care. Once you're an adult, do what you want. Don't but, try to... But all that, back around to Kenneth, is that just like Joe, he's just maybe not fit to lead anymore. Maybe it's time for him to go retire. Yeah, he wasn't when he started. Yeah. Maybe maybe he was there was but there was a lot of abuses in the 80s and 90s that we weren't uh, like uh, awake to even realize were happening. We just kind of loved the stories. Right. You know. And his children were very susceptible to that. So, I don't know. I uh I at the, at the, like I love dogging on homies like Kenneth because Kenneth Copeland, because, yes, obviously, that's ridiculous. Yes. And when I was a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing to be cynical about things like that. Oh, I didn't think that. Yeah, yeah, and then, like, whenever we were... Uh, no, 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 I would say when I was a kid, when I was a teenager. Like, mm. I remember being in, in Destiny Church and being like, this is bullshit. Really? Yeah. Do you remember sitting in the back with Jeff Daigle and him 
reading us the scripture that was on the screen and saying, oh, this is no, being I, mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't there. He just did that. He had like a special relationship with you. He didn't yeah. do that. He didn't do that crap with me. But I remember, yeah. I know you've, you've told me the story several times. Yeah. So I was sitting there going, yeah, you're right. This is kind of, this is, this is an abuse of the scripture. Like this is not being right. read properly. This is not even congruent with what it's saying that it is Christianity. So I wonder what he's doing now. I don't know. I tried to find him one time. Hmm. I, don't, I think I, don't, I should probably look him up again. But um, cynicism isn't helpful unless you put something back. If you're going to break something, you better have something better to fix it with. Yeah, that's my own. That's my only point. And so I do get tired of 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 taking shots at Joel Olstein or Kenneth Copeland or any of these TV preacher dudes. If we're not going to put something back in its place, mm -hmm. if you have something to put back in its place, by all means, let's replace it with a better idea. I don't really like to take shots idea. just to take shots. I, 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 I just, if I see something I don't like, then I'll, I'll mention it. Like, what, what would be get, the appropriate, you, like, what would be the best version of a TV preacher? Uh, I think one that doesn't use the give message too much because it can be it can come off as someone that's just like playing this playing the system right like joel is seen has this gigantic mm -hmm. arena of a church mm -hmm. obviously they're doing fine the arena At this point is nice the arena is nice I and guess. it's great the great experience whatever whatever like it helps a bazillion people have a but great it does, sunday it does but... create a lot of cynicalness for people that don't really get the the whole idea or whatever um and yeah i think it's really just that's the main problem is people see these big preachers as people who are gaming the the system and manipulating all these people to give them money mm -hmm, which is though, might be true which might be a true in a sense uh but they're still doing some good mm. because like you said you there's people who are going to church on sundays instead of sitting home eating cheetos and watching porn which yeah, is yeah. great a great, <laughs> a great alternative. we need to give these men something to do right. with their lives yeah. the men have to have a meaningful work a purpose something to go do right. take their energy and use for good right. if they don't have that my god yeah <laughs> watch society have a very hard time well i had i wrote down three points that we don't even have time to get into but i still want to do the dad yeah. jokes segment. Yeah. so let's do uh the dad jokes and call it okay because we're an hour and a half all right but i don't think there was any segments that i have to like babysit this this episode mm. it was great it was a great episode it all it flew all right you got yours what do you call a wizard who's good with ceramics? Ceramics? Yeah. What? Harry Potter. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's, <laughs> that is what I would call that. Uh, five ants rented an apartment with another five ants. Big family. Mm-hmm. Now they're tenants. Oh, come on. <laughs> Ants. <laughs> All right. <sighs> what do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. <laughs> Dang it. Oh my God. It's like the oldest dad joke read in the one book. of those. Okay. <laughs> oh, How man. do. Okay. I'm walking away from my bank account. Why? I'm just trying to take out all the negative things in my life. <laughs> uh, what kind of shoes does a lazy person wear? I have no idea. Freaking loafers, man. <laughs> loafers. <laughs> <laughs> a guy uh broke into my house last night looking for money yeah so i got up it was me <laughs> give me your money <laughs> sorry keep going so i got up yeah started looking with them 
<laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> well, I was, I, I mean, you, you, you know just as much as I, I would where that money is. <laughs> what would happen if you took all the books in the world? Every book. All the books. Huge books, little books. Okay. Good books, bad books. You threw them in the ocean. What would happen? I have no idea. Would cause a tidal wave. Oh. <laughs> I get it. Yesterday, I was washing my car with my son. Eventually, he said, Dad, can't you just use a sponge? Come here. Come here, kid. <laughs> Dad, can't you just use a sponge? <laughs> uh, how did uh, Jack Sparrow get his ship for so cheap? Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. I don't know. It was on sale. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh. <laughs> man, I love going outdoors. You do? It's much safer than going out windows. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what did the uh, cannibal choose for his last meal? Oh man, I think I know this one. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I don't know. Five guys. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Botox. It's like control alt delete for your face. <laughs> Is it that what it's like? Do, do, do. It's do, more do, like do. that Mario, the <laughs> intro to Mario 64. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it never looks quite right. Have you ever messed up the Mario face and tried to put it back? Unless you press the button to reset. It's never the same. It never looks, it never, it never goes back. You got one more? And then I do want to ask you your opinion on Botox. And then, and then. What happens when a snowman throws a tantrum? He melts. Yeah, he has a meltdown. <laughs> oh, he has a meltdown. Nice. Was, All right, I'm through with these dad jokes. That's that close. What do you think of Botox? Do you think? Do you think it's well, better? Okay. Do you think it's I'm better? I'm gonna say it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, you say this it. Is, this I've, is, I've I'm got, going all the way. I went on a date with a girl that I knew from long ago, and she had had some work done. Yep. And I knew what she looked like back then, so I kind of. It was very unnecessary. I felt yep. sad. That really? she had done so much work. And it actually worked in reverse. She had uh, not just the Botox. There was all kinds of stuff. Lifted, yep. adjusted, engorged, whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, I just felt sad. Because it, it, it signified to me not... Like... I think it would have been... Those would have been nice features in a vacuum. What? <laughs> you know, like if it was just like those were just naturally occurring. But to me, I don't know. my brain, <laughs> my, my, my brain is the features that she added to herself might have been nice in a vacuum, like, 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 without the context of changing yourself. But yeah, yeah. all added up, it seemed like. Maybe this person had a hard time accepting themselves, right? And that made that was the most unattractive thing about it. Was, you know, was that like if you're going to the trouble to modify your body because you hate yourself, that's the greater problem. And that's kind of where I uh, kind of like the, it didn't work out, right? This I, I think what you said the, uh, when you started talking it pre pretty much nailed it on the head for me. People get Botox because they want to look younger. Mm. But when they get Botox, it actually does the opposite. It makes them look like they're trying it to look It makes them look older because you see Botox on people that are in their 70s and it's all just like plastic. Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> doesn't matter what emotion you're having, well, you the know same reaction on I, uh, your face. I so if you try to look Botoxy, you're gonna look plastic and yeah. old. You're not gonna look younger. In fact, a little bit of wrinkle is a lot hotter than the plastic nothingness. Sure. That's my opinion. Well, I remember my mom, she's never had any plastic surgery that I know of. She has had her, I believe her eyebrows tattooed because like to just permanent makeup is what they call it. Oh yeah. Like, you know, since they don't have to darken it anymore. Nice. But, and I don't blame her for doing that. She's, I mean, my parents are old now, but yeah. I remember my mom in her thirties and into her forties would like do this. Like what if Your I was, mom what, if I was what if I was thin again? You know what I mean? Like she what if, just... what if my jaw was like the skin on my face was not wrinkly anymore? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It made me kind of sad to watch you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like, well, you know, you could you could hit the gym, you could eat more carrots or whatever. You they actually got this thing that you could work out your jaw now. It's like a little. I know a guy thing. who took that all the way to like Chad City. Yeah, like his jaw is literally like. <laughs> but 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 I I will tell you that it's not any more attractive. Oh really? Like like before and after, like I don't think any girls are gonna be like, oh yeah, I wanna. Oh, what a nice I want to get with that guy. I want to <laughs> get with that jaw. jaw. No. Uh -uh. And furthermore, the guy who spends that much time working on himself also hates himself. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's the other thing, too, is it's like I'm all for self improvement and all for hitting the gym and, and all for all that care stuff. Of yourself. As yeah. long as it's not fueled by a hatred of self. Mm -hmm. If it's for a love of self, like, like man, like I, like the, the, the idea in Christianity is my, my body is a temple that, right. that contains the the value of exactly one person which is divine like mm -hmm. we we believe that that the that, that the human life is sacred and beautiful and so it deserves everything it can get and if you see yourself as valuable and that's and you have work to do and yeah. you have you have a purpose in your life and so you're going to take care of your body that is way different than what i think oftentimes we see people going giga chad in the gym for yeah. because they 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 think that they are unlovable or or don't have any value and that's why they have to change themselves and i there's a line yeah i think there's a line yeah. so let me so uh, i just want to so botox botox overall unattractive or attractive well, unattractive because unattractive, it signifies yeah. it signifies a hatred of self most likely yeah i think i find it extremely unattractive too yeah. and i think that's it's also the, an easy way out I think that's the overall consensus. Now, if you're a burn victim, what? and you'd get plastic surgery to put your face back together. Oh, no, yeah. I'm not saying all... all that's all, a whole different thing. I'm not yeah. really talking about the grand scheme of plastic surgery. I'm mainly yeah. talking about, like, Botox, just individually. Yeah, but the same thing that drives people to Botox is the same thing that would drive anyone to change their body. Right. And, you know, it, I guess it can be a, a very addicting experience. Once you start, like, putting plastic in your face, you're like, what else can I fix? Yeah, of course it is. If it was as easy as, like, hey, man, like, you know, if I thought it was easy to, like, just delete, if I could just, like, get abs for money, yeah, you bet I'd pay the money to get abs. <laughs> But it wouldn't make me healthier. No. You know, and I've actually had, uh, I've been close to people who have had stomach stapling surgery, got extremely in shape, and then got fat again. Yeah. Because <laughs> they didn't seen, change the habits. I've seen, I've seen that too. Yes. Yeah, there's, like, yeah, there's this person that I know that uh, did that exact thing. Yeah. They were a really big, yeah. gigantic person. Went and got liposuction. Yeah. Uh, got like half their tummy, their belly yeah. cut off and then uh -huh. sewed together so they yeah. couldn't eat as much. Yeah. Tummy tuck, all that stuff. Yeah. Ten years later. Back. Right back where they started. Sucks. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But uh, anyways. It didn't change their activity. They didn't definitely. change their activities. They just put a band-aid on their problem and then, mm. you know, didn't change their lifestyle. So they just went right back to where they were. But I think the overall consensus on Botox is probably 90% of men... Mm. agree with what we just said oh yeah same thing with makeup too it's I, like we like makeup too much until makeup. it stops being you right yeah i yeah i love makeup i, I mean you know i i think there's a balance i mean like do women like, like the men way, with the like, way that my wife does her her makeup is great 
I right. find her makeup extremely attractive. But it's probably not extreme. It's not extreme. It's right. like it's like a, it's like it looks natural. Like so, I guess if you if you're getting Botox and you can find the y'all women out there looking like Mimi from the Drew Carey show. <laughs> if you get Botox and you find the natural stopping point, then sure, get Botox. Yeah, but, the, but that's most subtle. likely that's There's, not where it's gonna. That's, where, that's where on earth is land. that line? Are you smart enough to know where it is? I have not. Yeah. Like. No plastic surgeon is ever going to be like, ma'am, you don't need this. <laughs> no, no, <it's laughs> That's terrible. never going to happen. Don't give me your money. You're going to walk no, they're in gonna be, You're going to get there. They're going to give you Botox. And they're like, you know what else you could fix? You know, you could probably just blow these up. You could blow that up. You could blow... <laughs> yeah, you know what else you could fix? We could cut off a little bit of your shoulder and put it in your cheek. Is that what people are doing? I have no idea. I just made that up. Oh. I'm sure that we'll get to that point. Yeah. Like, there's somebody from... Okay, I can't be too... But there's somebody... That I kind of grew up around. Mm. That has just gone too much in this area. Yeah. Fillers, Botox, and it's just. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> it's bad. It looks bad. It's really sad it when this, you. It it's really me. sad when you knew somebody they so and pretty. they were objectively hot. Yeah. And then they went down. Down the Botox. Of, and trying to improve. Trail. Yeah. And the, they, were already, they were already like already smoking. Very pretty. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know. All right. Let's stop it there. Thanks for watching. See you next week.